All of good man. Hey there guys, a bit of a random video today. As you can tell from the title, I am hauling water. And for a guy who has been rainwater harvesting off my roof for the past 12 years since I built my house, that's kind of a big thing. Uh, normally each year we are able to supply about 95% of our water needs just from collecting rainwater. But this past year has been quite a bit different. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to show you a little tray that I built in the back of the truck to help hold this IBC tote. I'll go over my water transfer pump procedure to get the water from here into the tanks. And then uh, I'll close it all out with the, uh, some of my thoughts on adapting and improvising and just making do with the circumstances you have. Get a big long scratch and I didn't even know it.
girl is the best working dog ever. Always wants to be with dad, <laughs> aren't you? She loves these drives. Okay, so here's my water transfer setup. Starting with the IBC tote, I have PVC fittings that reduce the two inch connection from the IBC tote down to just a standard one inch PVC pipe. And that just friction fits along this inlet of the pump. This is just a standard utility pump. And then the outlet, I have a one inch threaded fitting with another one inch threaded fitting that connects to this one inch transfer hose that I got from Harbor Freight. And anyway, that's pretty much it. So I just slip it on here like this. And then I open this valve and that will prime the pump. And then I just turn it on and it transfers. And just a real quick note, if you were wondering about this connection up here, since it just slips on, if that's gonna pop off when I turn the pump on, no it won't, and that is because this is the side that is uh, creating the vacuum, so it's actually gonna wanna pull together as the pump starts. So I'm gonna open this valve. You can hear the water starting to go into the pump, and it's starting to run through the line, and I'll turn it on. All right guys, that is pretty much gonna do it for the water hauling portion of this video. I have no idea if that was interesting at all, especially since you're used to me uh, talking about rainwater harvesting or showing you a tour of some harvesting system that I've set up off my shop or my house or some random other rainwater harvesting thing. Um, but anyway, I think this whole video is actually a good opportunity to talk about problem solving and being able to find a solution to whatever problem your life may present you. Obviously in this case, my problem was that we haven't had the normal amount of rainfall that we have had the previous 11 or 12 years since we built this house. And the solution in this short term example was to uh, set up a little water hauling thing so I could simply bring extra water to my house to help uh, kind of make make the ends meet um, but obviously other solutions for this will be to you know investigate further if we need to invest more in water capacity as in more tanks or building that cistern that I've talked about building for several years now um, or perhaps adding more rainwater collection surfaces different things like that um, but basically, it's a combination of several different things to uh, 
to finally uh, get that solution that you're looking for for this particular problem. And I think in the bigger picture, uh, that's the way we need to look at problems with in life, whatever they may be. Uh, one of the examples I was thinking of is, you know, say someone's trying to figure out what kind of material to build a house out of. And they're thinking about lumber and the lumber salesman in front of them is telling them definitely lumber is the only way you build a house. Um, it's, you know, the best, it's the cheapest, it's the most affordable, you can put it up quickly. But that person needs to remember that the lumber salesman has a vested financial interest in selling them lumber and that perhaps other solutions might be brick or block or steel frame or heck earth bag or straw bale or something else or a combination of those um, but i think uh, where some people fall into the trap is when they uh, have a narrow tunnel vision and they find one solution and they kind of double down on that uh, that happens a lot in our current world um, and i think it is just something that is good to think about that there's oftentimes more than one solution and or a combination of solutions that might actually be uh, the best option to overcome whatever obstacle. And in that analogy about the building a house or a structure out of the materials, perhaps this is, this is the thinking outside the box, perhaps buying that old mobile home that might be three or four decades old, but maybe the bones are good, and just adding new wall material, new paint, cleaning it really well, adding a new coat of uh, roofing membrane, maybe that's the best solution. It's been deemed safe for three or four decades, and who knows, it might last another two or three decades and be very cheap and affordable and readily available. Some of you may get um, other parallels to that example, and I'll just leave that with you if you understand that or not. But uh, that's pretty much it. I hope this was an entertaining video. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you liked it. And uh, as always, hit the subscribe button for more similar content. And the next video is gonna be the chicken coop yard. And I'm hoping you'll see chickens in it, in that video. See ya. That's a rain.